and welcome. I'm Christine from Stitch This. I'm fortunate that I have a shop where I sell secondhand goods and I also get to um, repurpose a lot of things. So I'm, um, I've recently acquired about two and a half tonne of upholstery fabric that would have otherwise gone to landfill. So what I've been doing with the fabric is making all sorts of different bags and pouches and things like that. So one of them I've been working on recently is the supermarket shopping bags, just the ones that you attach, that the checkout operators attach in their little baskets and fill up all the groceries, such as in here. So all of this is done with upholstery fabric and I also, because we do um, deceased estates and house cleanouts, I'm, I also get a lot of fabric from people that hoard it. So this bag is actually made with um, some kind of vintage dress material. I'm not really sure what it is. It was a bit smelly, but I washed it up and made it into a grocery bag. So that's just one of them. The other thing we do, we like to repurpose anything we can. So what I've got inside this bag is a plastic base. The plastic base here is actually from the inside of a TV. You know the flat screen TVs that you get, the great big ones? Well, Chris, my partner, he is into upcycling. He pulls apart the TVs and inside the TV there are great big sheets of plastic which are fantastic for templates if you're a dressmaker or like doing sewing projects and things. But I actually like putting them inside some of these bags. So they just give a nice little bit of substance to the bottom of the bag. Not that they're needed. So stick around. I'm going to show you how to make all of these bags. Well, I'm going to show you how to make one. I mass produce them because I sell them in my shop. Um, and I'll show you how to quickly make these up and hopefully you can sell them at markets and things. Or if you don't like to sew or you can't be bothered, you can always buy them online on my website. So I'll post a link for that somewhere in this video. Anyway, stick by and I'll show you how I make these up. One of the reasons why I have made all these bags, apart from the fact that I've got a lot of fabric to get rid of, is that it really bugs me to get, um, I've covered these bags, this bag over, so you don't know who it's from, but this is just one of those really cheap store-bought supermarket shopping bags. And it's very, very flimsy. So we come home with lots of canned goods and bottles and things like that. And we don't want to see our goods coming apart, our bags coming apart, and then our groceries perhaps falling out, especially when in the bottom of the bag there's big holes like this. So um, for me, one of the easiest things to do, to decide to do with that fabric that I have, is actually make these grocery bags. They're all double stitched. Um, the fabric's really, really sturdy. It's not going to fall apart like this. And uh, yeah, they're just something a little bit different as well. Alrighty, let's get started. So I have my piece of fabric. This is an upholstery fabric that I'm making the bags with today. So out of this piece of fabric, I'm going to get two uh, grocery bags. So I want to cut this into 95 by 45 centimeters. So I'll get two out of it, as I said. I've got my strapping. This is um, quite a sturdy strapping, which is used for dog leads, horses, and things like that. I buy this locally, um, and it's Australian made as well. Uh, so it was a good surprise actually to find this very close to home, and it's cheaper than I buy on eBay. Quite sturdy, it's UV um, protectant as well, and all I need here is a metre ten of strapping, fold it in half, and just cut it down the centre. So I've got two strapping pieces for my bags, bag handles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I have a piece of ribbon. I just use scrap ribbons if I have them. 30 centimetres. And cut that in half. So the ribbon is actually the loops that you'll find on your supermarket shopping bags and the checkout person will be able to just loop that over onto their bag holder and hold the bags in place. So two strappings, two pieces of ribbon and I'll cut this piece of fabric 
into a 95 by 45 centimeter strip. So we only need one for the bag. Now I've had a bit of a discovery. This piece of fabric uh, will actually do three bags. So it'll depend on which way I want the pattern to go. If I want the pattern to go this way, then I'm only gonna get two bags out of it. If I'm happy to have the pattern go this way, I'll actually get three bags because I like to make the most out of my fabric. I'm actually gonna cut this into three pieces. So they'll be 45 centimeters by 95 centimeters. They don't actually have to be perfectly that size either if they're up or down a little bit, it's not gonna hurt. You don't wanna go too small though, otherwise you won't fit your groceries in there. So I'm gonna cut this up. So I've got my three pieces of fabric cut up. This bag here, just requires that one piece it's really really simple to do and when it's finished it'll be that layout okay so what we need to do now is just overlock all four edges now I choose to overlock these because I sell them so um, I've got to have a nice neat finish for them so rather than putting them together and then overlocking them I want to actually be able to open my seams out so I'm going to go and overlock all four edges if you don't have an overlocker, just use a zigzag around it. Um, if it's just for yourself, you don't even have to worry about doing that because I'll double stitch these later on when I put them together. So we'll go and overlock all of these edges now and then I'll show you what to do. Alrighty, so here's my trusty old overlocker and it's old. I picked it up at a clearing sale for about $5 and stuck a new needle in and it works a treat. It just doesn't have a light. All right, so what I'm going to do now is overlock all four edges. That was quick, eh? Alrighty, so I've overlocked all the edges of the bag body and now we'll get down to the business of putting it together. Alrighty, now that I've gone and overlocked this, I'm ready to put the bag body together. You don't have to overlock it, as I said. Um, you can just do a zigzag or nothing at all if it's going to be for yourself. So you just want to put the bag piece right sides together and the folded edge at the bottom. So what I'll be doing is stitching down that side and then down the other side and leaving it open at the top here. So you want to be able to, you want to do a double stitch as well. So I'm going to come down and stitch it and then I'll go and stitch it again because I want to have good secure seams. I don't want my groceries falling out and I don't want my customers' groceries falling out either. So we'll go and double stitch this. Now I just use the edge of my sewing foot as my guide. It doesn't have to be a quarter inch seam. You don't have to have a five eighth inch seam. There's no exact science in making these bags. So just go ahead and sew two rows of stitching. So all I'll do now is just flip it around and come straight back down the other side, down the same side. And repeat for the other side of the bag. So I've done the one side, open there. And go ahead and stitch down the other long side, remembering to keep the top open. So what we want to do now is just fold the top edge down about an inch, okay? So I usually just use my eye to measure this. If you want to, you can go and pin the whole thing down, measure, measure an inch down, 
and then stitch it all the way around. I'm just going to do this by sight. I um, like to do these things quickly, so I usually do about three or four bags at a time. I usually do those in about an hour or so, just depends on how many interruptions I have. So I'll take my free arm thing off. And remember I said to you earlier I wanted to keep my seams open. So this is the reason why I've overlocked it before I've gone and just sewn it together. So I want to keep my seams open and that's really just to not have too much bulk in my fabric when I'm going over it with my machine because I still want to look after my machines a little bit. I go through a few. I usually use um, my plastic plate as a guide and the edge of my foot so I sight it like that. So you can see here that the needle is about to go down just on the edge of the overlocked stitching and where the plastic window is on my machine, that's what I'm using as my guide as to where I'm folding my fabric. And as long as it's on the side there and lines up with the edge of the, the foot there, I'll be right. So one row of stitching all the way around here. Remember when you come to the other seam just to open your seams out. And that's it. So what I've done here is just folded the edge over and stitched it down okay that's the top edge of the bag what you need to do now is box your corners so just stick your arm down the bag open this seam out here so just grab that and grab the back of your hand and you've got a little triangle okay or an ear so turn that around and just lay that down here I normally do this by sight but I'll measure this out for you today. So I do about three and a half inches. And just put a mark here. So that's a three and a half inch line from the top here down to here. And I'll do the same for the other side. Okay. So when I've done that, you can just go and draw yourself a straight line. So pretend my line is nice and straight and I'm going to stitch straight across there. I'll do the same for the other side. <clears throat> grab, just open out the seam, grab the back of my hand and measure three and a half inches. Three and a half inch line is what I want to sew straight across from here, straight across there. And you want to make sure that this line here is down the center of the triangle as well. And just keep the seam open. So I'll sew that down. Again, we'll double stitch this. I actually usually do this two or three times 
I don't know why. It doesn't need it. But I will double stitch it. One side sewn down and I'll do the same for the other side all right so the bags almost done that's your little floppy ears here on the side and all you need to do is turn the bag inside so that the ears go to the inside and Push your corners out. So your side seams on the bag are down the side here and on this side. Nothing underneath, it doesn't need it. And the little ears are neatly tucked away inside the bag here. Okay. Now if you want to, you can stitch it down. Um, you can just run along from the inside and just stitch it straight down. I don't need to, I find it doesn't actually affect the groceries or anything like that. Um, sometimes I actually use some template plastic and I'll cut a piece of template plastic the size of this rectangle and stick that inside too. But again, not necessary. So that's the main body of your bag done and we'll go and attach the handles. So what I do now is Join the side seams up together in the middle, uh, down the centre here, and I'll just find the centre point on each side. So what I'll do now is find some pins. This room is so tiny and everything is just within arm's reach. So, find the centre of your bag, the side seams, and join that together. And then find, mark the centre, just put a pin in here. And do the same thing for the other side and you can open that out so that is the center of the front of the bag and back of the bag now this is where the loops are going to go so the two little pieces of ribbon that we have we're going to just lay that down on top of the um, fold And we can pin that down. And do the same thing for the other side. So that's the loop pinned down. Now I've pinned the edge of the loop down to the bottom of the fold on the edge because I'm actually going to stitch over the top of at the bottom there and I'll be double stitching at the top. So we're actually going to do a whole row of stitching on the very top edge and that'll secure the handles and that'll secure the ribbon as well. Now rather than taking it to the machine and doing that and then putting the handles on, I'll find the position for the handles. So what I will do now is that side seam here, take that to where your loop is. So you want, and then you're finding the center here. That's where one side of your handle is going. So if I put a pin in here, open it out and the same thing's going to happen on the other side. So I'll just mark a pin on this side. Do the same thing for the other side of the seam. Match that seam up to one of the little loops. Find the centre point. Put a pin in there. And then the front of the bag here, I'll put another pin in there. So I've got four pins in the bag now, and that's the position of the handles. 
So what I want to do now is put one handle on that side of the bag and one handle on the other side of the bag. So where the pin is, the handle is just going to be put in place all the way down to the edge of the seam. And I'll pin that in place. And you want to be careful not to twist your handle as you're putting that down. So the handle on this side is on the same side of the bag on the other side here. So you don't want it crossing over from front to back. You actually want, this is the front, or it's one side of the bag, so you want the handle on that same side. Turn it around and do the same for the other. So just make sure your handles are all not twisted and there you've got your bag. So that's your side seam here and a handle on each side. So now we want to go and sew all the way around. We want to do a top stitch all the way around and incorporate the handles as well. Now when we sew the handles down, I'll actually go over it a few times. So I don't want my handles to come off. As I get to the top here, I'm going to go back and forth a few times. And I also just use the very edge of um, the inside of my foot as the guide. So if I show you where the clear plastic meets the metal, that's the width of my seam from the top edge of the um, fabric here can be as wide as you like you don't have to do it a narrow top stitch but I like to okay so we're nearly finished the bag so so all the way around when you get to the handle stop and go back and forth a few times keep on going. Now I do the same for the ribbon. So just back and forth over the ribbon. Now you can actually just go around and do a square around this with the triangle, you know, a couple of crossover intersections between it as well. But as I've said, I make these for a living, so I'm not going to waste my time turning corners. And that's why I'll go back and forth several times to make sure that stitching never comes undone. Um, it's not just at the top that I'll do the stitching. I'll actually do the stitching down the bottom as well. So it's got a lot of... Um, reinforcement in there that that strap's not going to come off. So I've secured my loops and my bag handles at the top and at the same time done a row of top stitching. So we've got our top stitching here and then we've got our stitching to fold down the edge of the um, bag. We want to secure this as well so all I'm going to do is from here to here is just go and do some rows of stitching and do the same thing at the ribbon section as well. If you like to um, measure your top edge here and then pin it and everything like that and then stitch it down I'd recommend you putting your handles on in position at the same time 
So that way you can just go and do your row of stitching all the way around and do, then do your second row of stitching all the way around. But because I just sight mine, that's why I put my handles on second. So it's up to yourself. If you want to put your handles on at the same time that you're going around, pin and measure it, put the bag handles in place and the straps in place and you can do all of that quickly. But if you're like me and you like to do things quickly and take shortcuts but still have it looking all right, you can just go and sight it. Put your handles on and away you go. Alrighty, so here we go. One finished supermarket grocery bag. Very, very sturdy in this um, upholstery fabric. So you don't have to use upholstery fabric if you've got quilting cotton or, or any fabric that you want to reuse or an old sheet or anything like that, you can make a whole heap of these bags. So you can see that the stitching, I've just done a double row of stitching just on the inside of the bag handle here. Now, ribbon has a tendency to fray and so does um, some webbings. So what, I'm, what I actually do, especially for the ones that I sell, is just put some fray check on there. And that'll just stop it from fraying any further. So all I do is just run a bit of fray stop here on the ribbon and same on the other side. And that will just stop the bag from looking untidy when, when it gets used. So there you go. Now a couple more to make and hang them up in the shop to sell. You can buy these on my website as well. So I've only got three of these ones available. Um, but yeah, if you want to you can, and you don't want to make it yourself, you can purchase these online. If I can figure out how to put a link up, I'll put that up here somewhere. If not, it'll be in comments down below, just in the description section. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll do some more um, and let me know what you think. Or if you'd like me to make something else and show you how to do it. <laughs>